do do now that it's it's over for salvation. Uh, I've been speaking concerning the doctrine of the Bible. Doctrine is very important. Belief is very important. I want to know what somebody believes. I want to know if they believe eternal security or not. Because that tells me a great deal about somebody that believes, don't, don't believe they can lose their salvation one day and accept Jesus and have to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior the next. Once you're saved, I believe you're always saved. We still believe in the, and hold dear to the very stones that establish our foundation. We have affirmed, the last couple of weeks, we have affirmed our faith in the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have emphasized that the 66 books of the Bible are inspired. That means it was infallible. They're inerrant words of God. We have expressed our conviction that Jesus Christ is the eternal person of the Trinity and that he came into the world to die, uh, to came into the world from a virgin birth and, uh, and lived a sinless life, died a victorious death there on the cross of Calvary, rose the third day, ascended visibly into heaven and is coming again. We also stress the importance of salvation by grace, and by grace only, through faith alone. We point out the good works are the results of a new life in Christ, and not the means of obtaining it. We have boldly asserted our belief in the resurrection of the body and in the reality of heaven and hell. And we reinstate its conviction of what the Bible teaches about the church and the local assembly of believers. What, we, what do we need to grow? I guess that would be put it this way. There's a couple of things that we need to do. After we've been saved and accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we need to study, we need to pray, and we need to witness. Uh, the first dispensation of for the Christian growth is, is feasting upon the Scripture. We've got to read God's Word. And I think the best place to begin is the Gospel of John. You see, when a person is born again, he receives a new life. That life is supposed to grow. The development uh, is taken. Development takes away uh, as a newborn babe in Christ, and avails him on the milk and milk of the world. Apostle Paul said this: Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy, envy and evil speaking, a newborn babe desires pure milk of the word of God, that ye may grow by it. You know, Billy Graham was a, great, was a great speaker, but I got where I didn't even care to listen to him. I didn't even want to listen to him. Because he was all the time teaching about salvation. A person that already got salvation, they want something else. They want a little meat. You get tired of drinking milk. I do anyway. <laughs> So that's what, what milk is the word of God for new converts, converts, babes in Christ. But if they don't hunger for the good solid food, it is more difficult, difficult for them. See, in Hebrews it says, for every, everyone that uses milk is unskilled. He that, he, in the word of God of our writing, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to them that are a full age, even those who by reason of, of reason of us have thirst. 
stitches to conserve more good and evil. Second of all, spiritual growth is from the Old Testament contains some of the most beautiful things that are written in it. Uh, the value of prayer. They taught prayer. I mean, Daniel went and prayed three times a day at the open window. Looking to Jerusalem, praying. And uh, you see all sorts of Paul also urged believers to pray. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. The third essential form of growth is witnessing. Just telling others the good news of Christ is, is a sanctifying and strengthening example. The more we inform others about Christ, the more we become stronger in Christ. Children of God, we are expected to grow up to mature spiritual. We will if we have to learn if we have to learn how. If we are faithful in prayer, we will be faithful in the other things of the Lord that has done for us in his Bible pattern. Also, we believe that we are commended as Christ to ever uh, to evangelize all nations. Notice here what it says here. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Samaria, and, and in Jerusalem to the uttermost parts of the earth. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will receive power. We, we're not, God does not send us out by ourselves alone. It is, it is for his purpose. The command is best obeyed when we witness Faithfully, service in our local church answered the Lord's call of missionary endeavors. Give our children to God for the work of the gospel. Contribute our money to the work of the cause of the cause and pray for those who are acting in it. Tell the story of Jesus. We are to always tell the story of Jesus. What he's done for us. How he's done it and what he's done for us. Ask the Lord to show you what, he, what part he wants you to have in an important task reaching the world with the message of God. And he, uh, and as he directs you, fulfill the role, role of gratitude to him, zeal for his cause, and let your concern for the laws motivate you to go and do something concrete to assist in pronouncing the gospel. Also, remember, I'm encouraged to see how God has worked in the lives of the people who have heard our message. This is what Southern Baptists believe, and we should hold, hold it, hold true to it. If we don't, I see a lot of people say, you say, where do you go to? I go to, do you know what they believe? If you don't know what they believe, then you just go to go. Know what you believe. Take the church We believe and teach the intimate return of the Lord Jesus Christ to take his church and himself and accept his kingdom on earth. Now, even though our doctrine statement affirms the second coming, I do not believe, I do not believe in a general re resurrection. I believe that there is going to be two resurrections, two phases to it. One phase is that when 
when he comes in the air, so shall we be with the Lord. Uh, phase two is when he returns to earth to establish his kingdom. And, and, and that which is saints to reign for a thousand years. Phase one, probably the best biblical description of the first phase of Christ's return. His coming is uh, his own, for his own. He's given in chapter four, the Thessalonians. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise for then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the Lord in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We call this event the rapture or the, or the translation of the church. Both living believers and those who have died with will in a moment but a twinkling of an eye be changed into to look like him. Be like him. Meet, uh, meet the Lord in the air. We believe this occurs can occur at any time, any place. Lord can come back at any time or any place. When we refer to Christ coming is in that we are not setting a date. We just simply believe he can come at any moment, any time. That's what the Bible teaches. Phase two is not only is the Lord Jesus comes for the church, with the church, he returns to this earth with his church. This will happen at the end of the tribulation. To establish, he will come to establish his kingdom on earth. The phrase, and the Lord will return, his coming to establish his kingdom on earth is not what we would, uh, would, would occur. Rather, unlike the rapture, we know that we will be preceded by, by the disaster stricken on the earth. And, and, and uh, after he comes back to get, get his church, then we will have the great tribulation. The great tribulation, the, the, those days were not shortened, there would no flesh be alive. Through it all, however, the nation of Israel will be converted and many thousands of Gentiles will be saved. Believers in Christ will escape the clutches of the Antichrist will welcome the Lord when he comes in glory and defeats his foe. Cast the devil into the abyss for the thousand years and set up his millennial kingdom. All of these events will occur before the second phase. And the second phase, or phase two, is the Old Testament. You can speak of read Isaiah 2 and Isaiah 35. These scriptures uh, trace the time when Christ will reign over the earth and the earth and the those for the God create us will do. All of this will occur. So, what we believe is very important. Very, very important. What we believe. We have to believe that there is a God in heaven that knows us. Accepts us as we are. If we're willing to come to him. And accept him for this today. We uh, we have sixty six books, I believe, that are in our. I believe every word they say, whatever they say, I believe. And also, I believe in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I believe the second person of the Trinity is Jesus Christ. He is one that bore my sins and take me to give me salvation. 
the point of salvation by grace through faith alone. I am saved by God's grace and His grace only. Nothing I can do, nothing ever will, or will earn my salvation. Must be done by accepting Him. And when I survey these things, I remember those things that uh, the Lord has done for me. And this is my closing question. Is it, have you ever received him as your Savior? If not, I invite you to do so right now. The Bible gives us this promise. Many as receive him, to them give he the power to become sons of God. See, it's all God's work. Everything is, even God gives us the power to become children of God. And even to them that believe on his name, all we have to do is believe on him. Accept him before it is too late. On the pianist, or the No. We'll sing one verse. One, I 